Scarler from ID at Xbox. And hi, I'm Sarah Condi, also with the ID at Xbox team. And what you just saw was Killer Queen Black, an intense action strategy platformer. So I have played a ton of this game at arcades in Seattle, and so I gotta assume it's gonna have eight player multiplayer on Xbox? That's correct. Sweet. And we're thrilled to announce not only that it's coming to Xbox, but that it'll be a day one launch into Xbox Game Pass. Oh, that's awesome. And it makes it the perfect game to launch on our new show, ID at Game Pass. It's just turned out to be a great way for players to find new and really interesting games. And also, it's been an incredible vehicle for independent developers to reach new audiences. Well, with that, shall we jump into our next announcement? Let's go. Outer Wilds, from Mobius and Annapurna Interactive, is an exploration game about curiosity, roasting marshmallows, and unraveling the mysteries of the cosmos. It's coming in 2019, and we're thrilled to announce that it'll be a Game Pass Day 1 launch. Outer Wilds, we often call it an open world mystery. Uh, it's very much kind of an adventure game. There's no crafting um, because you die every 22 minutes and go back in time. So the only thing that you take with you from loop to loop is your knowledge of what you found and what you've discovered. Uh, it's very much a game of space archaeology and putting together clues about what's going on in this world, what's happening, uh, putting the story together kind of for yourself as you explore. Uh, we try very hard to make players curious and then give them the tools to explore and save their own curiosity. Mobius Digital was started five years ago by Masioka. Uh, we wanted to create an independent game studio that would do innovative games that anybody could play. We started uh, with a few mobile games on iOS and Android, and then when uh, Outer Wilds won the grand prize at IGF, we started developing that. If you've ever been camping outside at night, looking up at the stars, sitting around a campfire maybe, and we're like, wow, I really wish I could go hop into my ship I've got parked over in the trees and blast off and go explore what I see up in the sky. That's sort of the feeling that we're kind of wanting to capture with this game. Uh, my name is Wesley Martin. I'm the art director on Outer Wilds. The look of Outer Wilds was inspired by several things. One of the main things was national park ads from the 60s. We pulled a lot from NASA from that period as well, so using the National Park posters with their graphic shapes and simple colors fit really well with the level design of the game. The coolest part about the game visually is that all the planets in the game are physically simulated. So as you're flying around the solar system, you just naturally get things like eclipses and planets coming into view and a comet flying by, and it creates these really cinematic moments that just sort of happen due to the systems in the game. One of the big things we wanted to do with the game is create a world that feels like it's changing even when you're not there. Sort of, uh, nature doesn't care, right? It's all these giant systems happening, tornadoes on giant steep, brittle hollow physically imploding on itself and falling into a black hole. Those things will happen no matter where you're exploring in the solar system. And that was very important to give that sense that you don't have any effect on anything in this world, you're exploring it, but really you have to kind of bend to its whims, not the other way around. We try really hard to make sure that the art supports the game design so that it makes it easier to navigate at levels, easier to find points of interest. So it's always great to hear when players just sort of immerse themselves in the world and find all the cool things that we've hidden. What we have here is the signal scope, one of the many tools you get to use when you play Outer Wilds. Uh, the signal scope is a telescope. I can't use it because I only have two eyes. It was designed for a four-eyed species. Um, and it also has the ability to pick up distant sounds from outer space. Mobius is very excited for everyone to finally realize what a strange game we've made. Uh, we haven't shown a lot of the weird stuff in trailers, you know, intentionally. We're trying not to give too much away, but uh, wow, there's a lot of bonkers stuff in the solar system of Outer Wilds. Thanks for watching. Uh, we hope you check out Outer Wilds, uh, available on Xbox One and Game Pass. Hi, I'm Nick Zuklich, a content planner on the ID at Xbox team. Basically, that means I'm in a constant quest for great content and developers to bring to Xbox. I'm super excited to talk about what we're doing at PAX East. But before that, let's look at some other awesome games coming to Game Pass.
Drinking the Devil Under the Table, Goats Screaming in Shopping Carts, Cats Photography, Dungeon Crawling, What a Time to Be Alive. And guess how many of these games will be playable at PAX East? All of them. They will all be Game Pass Day 1 launches and all playable at PAX East. Make sure to come by the Xbox booth and check them out. You can enter to win one of four custom designed consoles we made for these great games. Be sure to retweet the Xbox Game Pass sweepstakes post. Lastly, we'll be giving out custom pins for all the games we'll be showing at PAX East. And yes, they're hard enamel for you pin enthusiasts. Oh, and speaking of After Party, we were able to sit down with Night School Studios to chat about the game. Milo, how long have we been friends? Our entire lives. Our whole entire lives. In After Party, you play as two characters. You play as Milo and Lola. And these are two best friends who just graduated college and um, through a very unfortunate accident find themselves in hell, dead, uh, trapped for what they think is an eternity. And it turns out, though, that fairly early in the evening, they find out that there's a loophole that if you can outdrink Satan, which nobody's ever done before, uh, you're allowed re-entry to Earth. One of the first people I pitched it to after Adam and I felt really good about it was Janina Gavon. And Janina, as I was talking to her, I was like, maybe you'll want to do a bit part in the game or something sort of on the side. And she's like, I need to play Lola. You've got to give me Lola. And as soon as she read just a little bit more of how dry and what a talker Lola was, Janina, you know, jumped all over it. Milo is played by a hilarious actor named Koi Dao, who we also know through the studio just because he is another USC alumni, like about half of our studio. The chemistry between Koi and Janina has been great because they're both quite similar to the actual characters. They play. Sorry, this is Lola. I'm Milo. I think I. Didn't we have the same advanced frisbee class? In... Yeah, no, I remember. He's the one who had his wisdom teeth removed and then threw up all over the admissions director. Well, it was nice catching up. Have a good summer. See ya. At night school, it's just always important for us when we're starting a game to try and take something narratively that is relatable for players and then tweaking that as much as possible. Uh, hey, Billy, can we maybe. How about we change the music up? I, uh, I can't actually. They only made one song for the DJ. What does that mean? I mean, yeah, sure thing. Just after this one's done. The big theme of the game is what is a friend? And what is a friend to you? Is it someone who is always going to agree with you? Is it someone who is going to be there for you? Is it someone who is going to challenge you? And kind of where you get your friends and how you keep them and what friends drift away. And the game kind of as it evolved became kind of an exploration of both how to be a good friend and how to define that and also what friendship really means to like the human soul. <laughs> That? Okay, I know that could have gone better. College was a non-stop, inescapable popularity contest where the winners rule over an imaginary world. You think anyone in society is gonna care what they called you in college? What's gonna be etched on your metallic space crypt will be what you did in the actual real world. And the real world starts right now. In our game, the drinking is really about like role-playing and allowing you to, to tailor your dialogue choices um, based on, on the moment. So if you want to be flirty as you enter a certain bar, go get that flirty drink. If you want to be more aggressive, do that. If you want to get more specific and speak with a pirate accent and actually only talk like a pirate, go ahead and do that. And so every bar and after party is really set up in a way to give the player all of these tools. And each bar has different drinks inside of it too. So ideally, not only are you thinking about what I want to say and how I interact appropriately inside of each of these scenarios, but also just how do I want to behave and how do I want to be perceived Received by these these other characters. So drinking was probably the biggest design push that we, uh, you know, made into the dialogue system. On top of that, though, uh, after party has a variety of activities that coexist with the dialogue system. So the whole team at night school has been heads down working on After Party for a little over two years now, and um, it's just exciting to finally get the game in people's hands. Uh, I think the thing that is going to probably surprise people the most is that there is a ton of heart in the game, and there's actually quite a bit of exploration of the, the challenges of friendship. By the end of the game, we really do challenge um, all of these friendships and factions down in hell, and so I think there's quite a bit more 
depth to the game than um, people might be expecting. But why is New York called New York? It's named after the Duke of York. <laughs> oh, thanks, Brainiac. Why don't you lecture us on what a rhetorical question is next? I'm just saying you should pace yourself. Thanks for watching. After Party comes out later this year. Lola, can you get alcohol poisoning in hell? Such a good game. Everybody should definitely check it out. But that means we're done, right? That's it? Uh, not quite. Ah, okay. So that means there's one more left. Blazing Chrome. Sweet. From Joy Masher and the Arcade Crew, Blazing Chrome throws you into some serious metal madness. The world is dominated by machines, threatening the few humans remaining with total extermination. You get to mess stuff up and free humankind in this classic run and gun, made by and for fans of serious arcade action. And with that, we just want to thank you all for joining us for our first round of Idea Game Pass. Have fun out there. Thanks, everybody. See ya.